We know, and we have known for some time, that about 25% of today's emissions of carbon dioxide come from forest loss and depletion. When you look at the historic sources of CO2 that make this situation so bad today, it's 40 to 50% of all of those emissions coming from forest loss and depletion. You cannot solve the global warming crisis without addressing forest loss and depletion. You need to look at how we can better conserve and sustain that forest land base. So why what's been done in California is so significant is it's the very first time globally that anyone has acknowledged the power of standing forests to be a positive tool in addressing global warming. We have 430 million acres of private forest land in the United States. If on average we simply increase the average age 10 or 20 years, we could literally store hundreds of millions to billions of tons of CO2 durably on our own American landscape. And in doing that, we'd increase our own timber supply within the country, we'd improve water quality, and we'd improve habitat as well. Many people think of climate change as an environmental problem. It's an economic problem. And that is at the root of how we approach the solutions. Why do we have emissions? Because either the market encourages it, as it does in forest issues, because you get paid more to cut more, you get paid more to develop, and that means the emissions happen. Why do we have emissions out of the energy sector? Because you effectively, it's fine if you're wasteful. So what we need to do is harness those market forces to say, we'll pay you to be more efficient. We will pay you if you're a landowner to keep your land in forest and to manage it more sustainably. So that is what we did in California. The Van Eck forests will provide roughly half a million tons of carbon emissions reductions over the lifetime of the project. The whole voluntary carbon offset market is the wild west of a new woolly future where many people are acting out of their best intentions but without a solid, standardized, scientifically based system that has clear enforceability, verifiability, transparency in its reporting, and rigor. What California did, and what sets California completely apart from the voluntary market, is that it has provided just that state-backed system. So under these protocols, what you do is you take the standard baseline that is the level playing field for everybody. What are you required to do? And if you commit for the long term to doing something different than that, that results in more carbon, this enables you to then account for that, register that, have that verified, and then you can take that new forest product to the marketplace and offer it for sale. What the markets have been waiting for is to operate in a large-scale fashion, and what the markets have responded to in an overwhelming positive way they wanted the risk taken out of doing carbon emissions reductions projects. That risk was removed when the Air Resources Board said, here's a system that we like. This will count towards meeting our AB32 emissions reductions targets. The market said, great, we have the confidence to know that if we purchase these emissions reductions, we can rely on them and use them for trading across the board. We market these carbon emissions reductions credits the same way we market the timber from uh, these lands, which is we seek to provide the best possible return for the landowner that we represent. We've had buyers of all kinds, those such as the governor and House Speaker Pelosi and California Speaker Nunez, who wanted to do as much as they could personally, reducing emissions that they can't not cause emission of. When you and I get in our cars, we cause emissions. These folks said, we want to make a difference. We want to stand behind the program California's put together. And we're going to reduce our emissions through where we know we can make a difference, working in these forests in a system that the state has backed. We've also had large commodity traders 
buy from us. We've had uh, a bus company, very committed, green business, MTR, reduce every emission that they possibly can. They have the most efficient, cleanest buses that they have, but as I said, when you drive, you create emissions. And so after having done everything they can technologically, then they've chosen to offset what they cannot reduce through working with us and the forests. We elected to work with these folks because they did provide such a powerful example. And they acted in advance of that CARB decision. And I think that probably also helped provide comfort that if these folks felt this was such a strong, incredible system, that it was a good basis to work from. Now, I see what they're doing as saying, we are, by our personal example, supporting a scientifically grounded, first in the world, standardized system that was developed in California to show other people how they, too, can make a real difference. So we're in the middle of a carbon inventory plot as part of our project registration with the California Registry. This is Mark Andre, our forester. And Mark, tell us yeah. about this plot. Plot 20, installed uh, the 15th of uh, February 2008 by Jared Gerstein. Um, this, this was an uh, inventory plot that was installed post-harvest in this, this unit. And the idea is this is a permanent plot. It, it's been um, uh, located with GPS, so the XY coordinates you can, it can be relocated again in 12 years to measure the growth and the changes in, in the, this stand's um, uh, dynamics over the next 12 years in order to make sure that, uh, um, one, that the carbon expectations are, are being met by, by the growth and also to uh, monitor things such as mortality, um, monitor uh, growth for other reasons too, just, f just for modeling, for, for management purposes, for timber harvesting okay. projections. So and this so is, oh, I'm sorry. What are the different pools that we inventory in doing this? There's the standing live, but what also is yeah. other things inventoried? We got the standing live trees. Over there you can see a very large stump, which is, you know, Part of the carbon pool, there is uh, some of the down wood, the down logs, which um, there are equations that, that factor these things in, into pools of, of um, live wood, dead wood, and, and soil uh, carbon. Uh, and this is all for, for measuring the stock and, and the changes over time. This is just tremendously exciting. One of the co-benefits of managing forests for their climate benefits is that you restore the forest for its carbon stocks, but that means you're restoring the forest to what it can naturally do, and that means that all the threatened and endangered species who have been losing habitat due to the pressures on forests can return. And here in the Van Eck Forest, we're managing to help restore for spotted owls. And what's enormously exciting is that the first pair of spotted owls are looking at this saying, hmm, looks pretty nice. Think I'll move in. And the, what you just heard was one of the pair that's been looking at moving in. If you will, they're checking out a retirement community and they think it looks pretty darn nice. 